There is a line that we say in the Festival of Light that Swami Kriyananda wrote many years ago that forms a, a significant and central part of our Sunday service or Sunday satsang that we do every week. And the line is, for lo, peace awaits you in the unknown. And I'll just give a little bit of background for those who may not know the festival or may be less familiar with sort of the nuances of it. Swami's using the image of a bird, a little bird being born and its parents when it, at the appropriate time saying, okay, now go out into the world and learn great lessons from life. Be fruitful in the gifts you have been given and share, expand and multiply them and share them with others, even as we have shared with you. And the bird goes off and learns how to fly and, and is, feels pretty hoity-toity, feels pretty proud of the ability to fly and and then begins to be buffeted by winds. And this is, and, and this bird is, is sort of the image of the life of our soul, not just the life of this body, but the life of all of our lives in a sense, how we grow, how we learn, and how we get knocked around. We get knocked around by the storms of life. And the little bird gets tossed around in this wind, and the wind says to him, look, stop fighting me. Let me add my strength to yours. And he does, and he soars high above the clouds. And then hours passed and night fell and the little bird grew afraid. How, it cried, can I fly in this darkness? And the night whispered, fear not, for lo, peace awaits you in the unknown. Surrender to me and your strength will be renewed. And the tiny rebel surrendered and soon found the night's counsel to be true. Now, all of that is indicative of an experience, experiences that we all have in our lives. And so I'll just give an example from my own life. Many times I have been asked to move to a different place for work related, to take a position, you know, somewhere in some other state perhaps. I remember moving to Seattle in the early 1990s to be, join the ministry staff there. And I didn't know anyone in Seattle. I had seen some pictures and I got a little bit of an introduction from some of the people who had been there. But otherwise I didn't actually know anyone before getting there. And I remember this this feeling of the little bird, but how can I fly in this darkness? How, what'll, what will happen to me? And, but I, you know, I launched in, it's like, you know, you do what you have to do. I think of my own grandparents who emigrated into this country from uh, Eastern Europe and wow, you know, what, what a, what a new world. You know, they had been told by relatives, okay, you should come. It's, you know, the water's warm. <laughs> you can swim here. It's good. And, you know, you can make a living. You can make a life. But what an interesting, you know, would, it would have been fascinating to hear the conversations going. You know, things were not going so well where they were. And some people, you know, some handful of people had the insight and the wherewithal to travel across the world and start a new life. And they and, and a bunch of their village, village relatives and friends came along as well. And they landed up in America and began a new life. And you may have certain visualizations, you know, you may be afraid, oh, but what if this, what if that happens, etc. And life is just saying, look, have faith. Because peace does, in fact, await you in the unknown. If we try to keep everything familiar, it's, we get, there's, a, there's this, it's like life stops uh, blessing that. You know, as a, as a point of rest in between adventures, okay, fine. You know, the seafaring sailor captain, yes, comes back home, you know, rests up for a few weeks or even a few months. 
But then, you know, the sea calls him back out across to adventures, new adventures. Is, is it always going to be sunny and the breeze always blowing lightly? No, sometimes it's going to be wild and stormy. Sometimes there's going to be no wind at all and then the boat sits becalmed somewhere and there's difficulties and challenges related to that. But afterwards, it's the challenges that we remember fondly because we had to put forth the energy to grow. And so in our lives, especially when we're coming up against something big, I'll just give another example. I remember uh, being asked to move to India. This was in 2003. And I had visualized going to India, perhaps more on the level of just a tour, a pilgrimage, a visit of some kind, because India is the home of our spiritual tradition in many ways. And, you know, it's a natural dream. And so you have certain imaginings, certain visualizations of what it might be like to go. But I didn't know. And when the time came closer, it's like everything is narrowing towards the moment when you get on the plane. You know, you've wrapped up all your life beforehand. It's all, you know, it's almost like everything's passing through the eye of a needle, you know, which is like the security process going through to get to the gate and then, you know, going down the, the jetway to get on the plane and then getting on the plane and, you know, then you emerge on the other side and it's like it all starts to open up again. And wow, it's, it's never anything quite like what we visualize. We may have some deja vu experience where we've dreamed something before and it's a vision of the future. Those things do happen also. But peace does await us in the unknown. Because unless and until we embrace the challenges that life is giving us, it's like we haven't f grown fully into our potential. Is it natural to know that peace will await us in the unknown? It's not automatic. It's not an instinctive realization. But if you live a life that embraces the challenges that come, then you do eventually realize, gosh, I learned something valuable. I experienced great blessing. I explored more of my own potential and helped others to do the same by doing so. And yes, I can add my testimony to those who have gone before me. Peace does await us in the unknown. We just have to be willing to explore that unknown with faith in order to find out that that is in fact the truth. Namaste.